Hello and welcome back. This time we are going to talk about a very usual thing to demand from our control loop, stability. We want our control loop to be stable. Stability means if we do a change, if there is an error or if there is a reference variable jump or something like this, this control loop should reach a new stable position without permanent swinging or something like this or worse going out of bounds this should not happen this would be stability so we're going to talk about stability stability of control loops Stability of control loops. This will take a while, just as a warning. Remember what we used as formula? Reference transfer function, our reference transfer function, FW. This was how the reference value was transferred to the controlled variable. Okay. How did it look like? It was fr, the regulator, the controller transfer function, multiplied by fs, the system transfer function, divided by 1 plus fr from s, multiplied by fs from s. Well, basically, what this is, yeah, these are just in linear time invariant systems, yeah, these are two polynomes. Yeah. There is one in the denominator, one polynome. Yeah. I will draw now two polynomes, one in the numerator and one in the denominator. And the polynomes does have some coefficients. So there is a B S multiplied by M plus tuk 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 tuk. Then we have a B2 S squared plus B1 S plus B0. Yeah. Numerator polynomial. And the same thing I have in the denominator. Yeah. So there's an S of N plus and a n minus 1 s n minus 1 plus tuk 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 a2 multiplied by s squared plus a1 multiplied by s plus a0 so this is the polynome in the numerator and this is the polynome in the denominator or because now it does not really fit to our script I will use the German abbreviations yeah? this means Zähler polynom divided by Nenner polynom yeah? numerator denominator Zähler Nenner okay? this is why these abbreviations are now let's think a little bit what is the possible instable case. Yeah? If this value is very small, changes of the uh, reference variable are not really influencing the output. Yeah? Not too good. Yeah? But if this is getting very, very high, yeah, then also small changes in the reference value will lead to huge changes in the referent in the in the control variable. This smells like instability. Yeah. When is getting this unusual high? If we're dividing this by zero. Okay? So we're interested in the null positions of the denominator polynomial, nano polynomial. Because the null positions of the denominator polynomial 
are the poles of the total function. Yeah? We're interested in the poles. So, our nana polynome, our denominator polynome, which is actually Sn plus An minus 1, Sn minus 1, plus tuck, 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 A2s squared plus A1s plus A0. We want to get the zero positions, the null positions of this. Yeah? What do we have to put into S that this is zero? Because this is this is exactly where this is getting unusual high. So we calculate the zero positions. Yeah? Calculate the zero positions, and we can say S minus p1 multiplied by s minus p2 multiplied by s minus p3 and so on yeah? and it's nth grade so we'll have n null positions it's pretty much the same yeah? what does it mean for our for our reference transfer function our reference transfer function would look like this then. Yeah? There is a C1 divided by S minus P1 plus C2 S minus P2 plus and so on. And there is a Cn divided by S minus Pn. This is pretty much the same. If we do this polynomial division and so on, we will end up in this variant c a constants p are the poles that's it if we do translate this into into the time again yeah we do a jump and we translate the resulting function into time function, this would look like this. C1 multiplied by E P1T plus C2 multiplied E P2T plus tuck, 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 plus Cn multiplied E PNT. Now look where these P's are. Look where these P's are. They're in the potent of an E. What does it mean? If P is bigger than zero, this will grow. Ah, that's not good. If P is bigger than zero, this will grow. If P is smaller than zero, this will get smaller. This is good. So, actually, Actually, what it means is that all of our zero points of the denominator polynome must have a real part below zero. Okay, so we know now the real part of all pn's yeah, must be smaller than zero, must be negative, then the system is stable. And this is all. Yeah? This is what we need to have. Yeah? This is what we need to have for a stable system. All the real parts of this piece of this pole positions must be lower than zero. Yeah? If one, if one is higher than zero, yeah? 
All right here, one real part of a Pn is bigger than zero, it's instable. One is enough, eh? because then there is one term which will grow. Eh? So this x from t will grow to infinity. Eh? And in between, there is stability border. Eh? If we are exactly, exactly at zero, eh? it's not, it doesn't really come out here. Eh? But the stability border. Eh? Stability border is no, no Pn, yeah, no real part of Pn bigger than zero. That's this because then it would be unstable. Yeah. But one, one pole equals zero. Yeah. Only one, then it's the border, border case. These are the things. So it directly comes out of the transfer function of the reference variable, reference variable transfer function. We're just looking at the pose of this. So let's draw a little thing. Let's keep this in mind. Yeah. Let's keep this in mind and draw. And draw a little something about this. So, looks good. If we do have here imaginary axis, and we do have a real axis. Yeah. The right part, yeah, the right part, here is instability. Here we have instability. If here is one pole, we'll end up with an instable system. Okay. On the other side, here, we do have stability. That's the stable part. If the poles are here, then the system might be stable or is stable. Not might be, the system is stable. So there's the green area of the piece and there is the red area of instability. Okay? If we have a single, a single pole here, huh? what would it mean? Yeah? The transfer function would look like this. Uh, the, the, the answer would look like this. We're going up without swing and have the new area. Okay? That's it. This is the new value. That's it. It's this one. If we do have now a pole might be a single pole, yeah? or a pole might, might be symmetric to the real axis. Yeah? So it might be here. Same distance. These poles, yeah? these poles would actually look like look like this. There is the new value. Yeah? And we will reach this new value. Hmm? These are these, this one, and this one. Hmm? If we are further outside, somewhere here, hmm? we will end up with a system which will look like this. It will look almost the same, so the it will go down exactly the same, but the swing will be with more frequency. Yeah? But the, the time until we reach stable will be the same, because 
this will have influence on the time until we reach stable. If we have further left, we go faster to the stable position. Yeah? If we are further away from the real axis, the swinging will get higher frequency. Okay. Poles here, yeah. this one, this will simply look This is the value we want to reach. Yeah? This will simply look like this. Ooh. Yeah? The further we are away, the, the faster we will move to infinity. Poles, which are symmetrically around the real axis. Yeah? How do these look? How do these look? There will be swinging again. Yeah. There will be swinging again. And we start to swing a little, and then we are increasing our swing. Yeah. And poles which are even further outside. And this is this. And poles which are even further outside will basically look the same way like this, yeah, but swing faster. So this is this is a rule. It will simply swing faster and will increase as fast as this one. Yeah. So this is this. And now let's have a look on stability border systems like this yeah. this is really not that stable because it will look like it will look like this yeah. Ooh, linear grow yeah. if we are out here somewhere if we are out here somewhere we end up At a nice swing, which will never be reduced, okay. And if we further outside, yeah, we end up with a nice swing, which will not be reduced but with higher frequency. Okay. The farther away from the real axis, the higher the frequency is. The closer we get to the imaginary axis from left the closer we get to this position where the swinging will never stop. The far away we are from the imaginary axis, the, the faster it will stop the swinging. And if you're right of the imaginary axis, it's unstable by default. This is how it looks like. This is how it looks like. So all all we have to do is compute here the poles. However, that's not that simple, you know. It's not that simple to compute the poles because, well, you need computers for it. Yeah, you can do it on I don't know maybe third grade, but on higher or third order. But on higher order, it really gets in the way. And there's a lot of guessing and a lot of calculations and so on. We can do this with computers nowadays. However, there are some simple rules yeah, which by control engineers were found out that are enough yeah, to see if a system is stable. One of the simple rules is you have a look on the poles. If all coefficients, here, you have a look at the coefficients. Yeah? If all of these coefficients of the denominator polynomial are there, so if no one is missing, if, if Sn, Sn minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, up to 0, yeah? are there. Yeah? And they do have the same sign then the system might be stable. 
It doesn't mean it is stable, but it might be stable. So what it means, if some coefficients are missing here, yeah, or there is a sign change, then it's an unstable system, forget it. But if there are every, every coefficient is here, yeah, and has the same sign, plus or minus does not really matter, has the same sign, then the system can be stable. It must not be stable, but it can. Yeah? At least there is the chance to have it stable. So this is already one rule, yeah? which looks a little bit like voodoo. Stability rule. There's also a second stability rule, yeah? which even looks much more like than voodoo, like this one, Herbert's. Herbert's criteria. Herbert's criteria. Remember our polynomial. Hmm? This one. Hmm? This one. This was our polynomial. I will simply put it up here. So we do not forget it. Our polynomial, and now we want to use the Herbert's criteria for our polynomial and see if this is a stable system. What we got to do is create the Herbert's matrix. There are several types of Herbert's matrices. I will write one possibility, the Herbert's matrix would look like this. I write here the coefficients. I start a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, a6, a7, a8, a9, and so on. Okay? Then in the two lines below, I start with 0, 0, and I do the same things here. I write a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, a6, a7, and so on and so on. Next one, 0, 0, again 0, 0, a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, and so on and so on. Yeah? And down here, and so on and so on and so on. How far I would need it, okay? Because, I mean, somewhere at some A, they are gone. Yeah? And, for instance, if I only have fourth grade, yeah, and no fifth, yeah, this fifth is zero, okay? Elements which are not here, I simply uh, set them zero. This is the Herbert's, Herbert's matrix. And now I'm calculating the Herbert's uh, determinants. Okay, Herbert's determinant. First grade. H1. This is basically A1. This one. Second, this is the determinant of this part a1, a3, a0, a2. Third one, three by three matrix a1, a3, a5, a0. A2, A4, 0, A1, A3, yeah. fourth grade. I take the top four A1, A3, A5, A7, A0, A2, A4, A6, 0, 0. A1, A3, A5, A0, 
a2, a4, this is 4, book, 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 book. Yeah? and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay? And now, yeah, I tell you, the system is stable if all of these determinants are bigger than zero. This must be bigger than zero, bigger than zero, bigger than zero, bigger than zero, then stable. Okay? This is voodoo, right? I mean, there is a mathematical background of this, yeah? but I'm not going to tell you. I'm just telling you the Hurwitz criteria, yeah? because it would go much too far. One possible criteria of stability. Yeah? Use of the polynomial, use the coefficients, write them in a special matrix, calculate out of the matrix different determinants, and if they're all positive, stable system, great, perfect. Yeah? Who is criteria? This is a little bit nebula, uh, like, a, like I said, voodoo. Yeah? Next thing we are going to talk about, the nucleus criteria. This is not that model. That has, uh, it's easier for us to understand. Huh? Where? Huh? This will be then covered in next video. Huh? For stability reasons, you should now know the transfer function huh? for the reference value, reference transfer function, two polynomes. Denominator polynomial is the important one. Yeah. Numerator polynomial, yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's influencing somehow, but it's not that important because the denominator polynomial is the important one. So we have a look at this. Calculate the poles out of it, yeah, of this one. And if we're using this, uh, version of our transfer function, we end up in time, if we do the Laplace transformation, and there we see that all the real parts of the P's must be smaller than zero to have a stable system to let not no term grow into eternity, infinity. Yeah. Yeah. One pole on the right side is enough that we have in stable system, this one here. Yeah. So these two things belong together. Yeah. All on the left side, stable system. All on the one, at least one on the right side, instable. If there is something in the middle, yeah, then it's a border case. Yeah. You see, it's not what we define stable, of course. Yeah. We would expect to have it stable. Stabilitätsgrenze, yeah. you should avoid this. The further we are away from the imaginary axis, the sooner it will get reach the end position. The further we are away from the real axis, the higher frequency swing we will have got. There was this criteria where we are only looking at the polynomial. We said if every if every coefficient is there, yeah, and it has the same sign the system might be stable. If the sign is changing or some coefficient is missing, is zero, then it's an instable system. Okay. This was the first Voodoo criteria. Second Voodoo criteria for stability was then this Herbert's criteria. Yeah. We write the coefficients in a certain form, calculate out, so calculate out of this some determinants and say, if every determinant is bigger than zero, it's stable. This you should know now about stability. Next time we are still talking about stability, but with the Nyquist criteria. You will see the Nyquist criteria is a little bit less voodoo than this one. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.